Hi guys! Today I'm reviewing the Philips Air Fryer XL. I reviewed the standard size Philips Air Fryer a while back. I'll put a link to that review in the description below in case you want to see it. This air fryer uses hot air and high speed air circulation to cook food. So your food is heated from all sides at once. Similar to a convection oven, but this is much smaller and you can leave it on your countertop. First I'll make french fries. This is a little over two pounds or one kilo of russet potatoes. I've cut them up into a regular french fry size about a quarter inch thick. Five to six medium potatoes. I'm soaking them in cold water for 30 minutes. While the fries are soaking, I'll tell you about the air fryer. The air fryer measures 16 and a half inches deep, 12 inches wide, and 12 inches tall. It's definitely large and will take up some space. The unit weighs 15 pounds, so it's best to find a permanent spot on your counter. Like most air fryers on the market, this is plastic. The unit has non-slip feet, so it doesn't move around on the counter. The electrical cord is 31 inches long, and there is cord storage in the back. Just push the cord into the slot. There is a vent in the back, don't block it. When you first get the unit, pull the handle to open the drawer. Lift the basket out. Remove the pan, just slide it out. And lift it off the tracks. The pan and the basket are dishwasher safe. Or you can wash both in warm soapy water and dry. Put the basket back in the pan. Open the drawer. Put the pan in and slide to close. The basket holds 2.65 pounds or 1.2 kilograms. There is a max line so don't fill above that. When you're cooking anything you can use an oil spray or mister on the bottom of the basket to help food from sticking. You can also spray the food. A couple of important things to remember. Never fill the pan with oil or liquid because it's not a deep fryer. This works on hot air. Don't use plastic, paper or cardboard in the unit. You can use parchment paper or foil under the food. Just make sure there's a half inch space around the bottom edge. Any dish that's oven safe can be used in this air fryer. Plug in the unit and press the on off button. You'll see the last select the temperature. Use the up and down buttons by the temperature icon to increase or decrease the temperature. You can set the cooking time by pressing the up and down arrows by the clock icon. If you hold it down, the numbers will just go up automatically. You can set the time for up to 60 minutes. To start cooking, press the start pause button. The display will count down the cooking time and beep when the time is up. If you want to stop the machine at any time, press the start pause button. And to turn the unit off, press the power on off button. You can program the unit to have one preset with a certain temperature and time. Press the star symbol. You can set the temperature and time. Press the star symbol again. You'll hear a beep that means the time and temperature are set. When you want to use the preset, just press the star symbol and start. You can see the 15 minutes I set is displayed. The temperature is 300, which is what I set for the preset. There is a quick start guide which has confusing pictures, so I wouldn't bother trying to figure it out. The user manual Looks like it's from the 80s. It's like reading a newspaper. Half English, half Spanish, but it does have all the information you need on the air fryer. A recipe book is also included. There's a useful guide with times and temperatures for fresh and frozen food. All the recipes in this book look really good. There are appetizers, spring rolls. I will make you chicken wings in this fryer with some sweet and spicy sauce. Entrees like steak, lamb, fish, and desserts. There's even a vanilla souffle recipe. You can use ramekins to bake the souffle in the air fryer. We'll cook the fries at 360 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Halfway through cooking, we'll check and shake the fries. Let's preheat the air fryer. Plug in the unit, turn the power button on, turn the temperature to 360, and press the start button to preheat. It should take about three minutes. The temperature is flashing. It'll stop flashing when the 360 degrees is reached. Drain the potatoes and dry them really well. I find the kitchen towels work best. With paper towels, you're probably going to end up wasting a lot of them. Mix the potatoes with two tablespoons of oil. The unit beeped and the 360 is no longer flashing. 
that means the temperature has reached 360. The first time you use it, it is normal to see some smoke. Open the drawer. I'm gonna put the fries in. The fries are about an inch down from the max line. Close the drawer. I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. And press start. The time has started counting down. You heard the dings, the 15 minutes are up. Let's check the fries. The outside of the machine is cool to the touch. You can see the fries in the middle have really no color to them at all. The ones on the edges have some color. You can lift the basket out and shake it. The fries have a tendency to stick together, so just use tongs, separate them. The ones on the bottom are a little golden. I'll cook these for another 10 minutes. In the beginning, you could have just set the timer to 30 minutes and pulled the basket out after 15, but then you have to set a different timer on your phone or something to make sure you remember. So I find it easier just to set it for 15, pull the basket out, and then just set it for another 15. 15 minutes are up. Let's check the fries. Ooh, they are crispy. You can hear them. They're definitely golden. You can even go a few minutes less than 30 minutes because my fries were very skinny. They look good. Most of them are golden brown. There are some in the middle that were a little bit white, but it's a good job on most of the fries. Just taste one. It's crunchy. When food is done, take the food out with the basket and then dump this out onto your serving dish. Both the basket and the pan are hot. Don't grab the pan and the basket and dump it together onto your serving dish because the basket does collect grease and you don't want that in your food. Little salt. While it's warm, These are really good crispy fries for just using two tablespoons of oil. And remember, this is five to six potatoes, a little over two pounds. If you want to try out this air fryer, I've put a link in the description below. I'll try making chicken wings. Turn the unit on. I want to preheat the oven for three minutes. I'm going to cook the chicken at 390 degrees Fahrenheit. It's already set. Press the on button. I'm using one and a half pounds of chicken wings. These have been washed and patted dry. There's 12 pieces total. The unit sounds like a fan. It's not very loud, but you can hear it. It's been just a little over three minutes and the temperature has stopped flashing. That means the unit has reached the set temperature of 390 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna open the basket. the chicken I've added some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Put them straight in the basket. You can see they're in a single layer. So one and a half pounds of chicken or 12 wings, maybe one or two more will fit in a single layer in the basket. Slide the basket in. And I'll set the timer for 10 minutes. With foods like chicken wings and french fries, you want to shake the basket halfway through cooking. So I'll check the chicken in 10 minutes and turn the wings over. You can smell the chicken and actually hear it cooking inside. Almost like deep frying sounds. The 10 minutes are up, I'll check the chicken. I'll turn these over. You can see one side is getting color on it and crispy. I have not added any oil to the chicken. I'll close the basket and cook for another 10 minutes. While the chicken's cooking, I'm making my sweet and spicy sauce. If you want the recipe for the sauce, I'll put a link down in the description below. 
I don't know if you can see all the hot air coming out from the back of the machine. It's a good idea to keep the air fryer away from any walls. Sounds like an elevator bell. When the timer counts down to zero, the unit turns off. Chicken looks good, it's golden. Before I put the sauce on, I'll cut into a wing for you. You can hear they are crispy, and most of them are evenly golden brown. It's really tasty and perfectly cooked. I would say 20 minutes is the right amount of time for chicken wings. While they're crispy, of course they're not going to be as crispy as deep fried chicken wings. These are healthier because I didn't use even a drop of oil on the chicken. The fat from the chicken skin itself is enough to give the wings a nice shine. You really don't need any oil to cook the chicken wings. You absolutely have to try the sauce. It's so good and it's so easy. I like to heat up the sauce a little till it bubbles and it really coats the chicken wings. And they're done. You can fit double the amount, almost three pounds in this basket. You'll just have to cook them longer and turn them more often so they're all evenly crispy. You can see some of the skin has stuck to the screen. Unplug the machine, wait till it cools down completely, and then we can wash the parts in warm soapy water. The most effective way to clean the mesh that I found is to use a stiff brush. Regular sponges just don't do a good job. The sides seem to be non-stick, so don't use anything abrasive. A basic soft sponge works just fine on the side. You can see all the grease on the bottom of the basket. When the unit cools down, you can wipe this off with paper towels and wash in warm soapy water, just like the basket. The heating coil is right up here. Use a damp cloth to wipe down the outside and the inside. Just make sure to dry it. So you saw the Philips Air Fryer XL did a great job on the chicken as well as the french fries. The chicken was cooked with absolutely no oil and the french fries were cooked with two tablespoons of oil. So this air fryer is a good alternative to deep frying. If you want to try out this air fryer, I've put a link in the description below. As always, I hope you found this review useful. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.